All right. Well, we're going to continue uh, the sermon series of Sound Mind this morning. And uh, look, what I'm about to talk about as sort of a lead into my message, whether you like it or not, I'm your pastor. So <laughs> I'm going to talk from time to time about superheroes, right? You, I think most of you know that I'm obsessed with uh, DC superheroes like Batman and Superman. And I've been drawn to them ever since I was a kid. Uh, I remember, I think it was in grade three when I first got into Batman, so that was a while ago. And uh, I love comic books. Um, I have a huge collection. I'm about to show you this, the, the, the room at the Parsonage with my collection in it. Uh, I love a lot of the movies, a lot of the animated adaptions. So I want to see, and we're embarrassed by this, but this is the reality of this room right now. That's... The front room, those of you who know the parsonage, when you walk in, the, the room to the left, that's, that's what we call our fun room, and it's currently looking like that. But you can see that we have a lot of stuff in there, right? A lot of different uh, comic books and a lot of different posters and action figures. Um, so I will, first of all, I'll come back to the fact that it looks like chaos in just a few moments, uh, a few minutes. But I also want to say that why, ask the question of why am I so into superhero stories, even to this day, why have I amassed such a large collection like this? And I, I fully admit that a lot of it has to do with nostalgia. A lot of it has to do with I wanted this stuff as a kid, and uh, I couldn't get it. I, I had lots of great stuff as a kid, but I couldn't get everything, so now I, I buy stuff to sort of fill that need, right, that uh, emotional need inside. And by the way, I do fully intend to share all these things with Timothy one day, so it's not like it's not going to be completely out of, of, out of place in a, a home full of two adults. But that being said, there is something to these stories that have resonated with me and with millions and millions of people for the past 80 years. You want to talk about 69 years, Batman has been around for 80 years this year. So that's older than my parents. That's older than most of you, right? So the thing is... These stories have resonated with people for, for many, many years, and there's a reason for that. It's not just superheroes. It's, it's science fiction, like Star Wars. It's, it's fantasy, like Lord of the Rings, and all these sort, sort of things that people like, right? Why do these stories resonate with people? The, the battle between good and evil, why does that resonate with people? Well, these stories resonate with people because they are the story of order versus chaos. And I just want to show you, to lighten things up just a little bit more, I just want to show you just how like, into some of these fans can be when it comes to these kinds of stories. This, is, this video just went viral the other day, or the other week, when the new Star Wars movie trailer came out, and this guy reacted this way to the trailer. Now, bear in mind, this is now the third movie out of this new trilogy. I don't know why he's so worked up over it. I don't get excited about anything that much, and let alone just the teaser trailer for a new Star Wars movie. Okay, it resonates with him, right? But a lot of the and a lot of these stories resonate with a lot of us, right? Why? Again, like I said, it's the story of order versus chaos. That is what these stories personify. And again, just just to just to bring it back to to my favorite Batman and the Joker. These are the personifications of order and chaos. Right In the Dark Knight movie, who here has seen The Dark Knight from about 10 years ago? Fantastic movie, probably my favorite movie of all time. The Joker even says, I'm an agent of chaos. He comes right out and says it. And he does all kinds of criminal activity all around Gotham City, right? And so Batman is the one who is the agent of order, who comes and battles against the agent of chaos, the Joker. And even the character of Batman at its core is all about battling chaos, because if you know the origin story of Batman, it's that Bruce Wayne's parents were murdered when he was a young child. And instead of letting that overtake him, instead of letting that ruin his life, he took that terrible situation and he, and he said, I'm going to devote myself to martial arts, to science, to detective work, and I'm going to become the greatest human superhero of all time. And he became Batman, right? Now, you can, you can scoff at people being into superheroes, including adults, but it resonates with us because it is the story of order versus chaos. That's why so many people see value in these stories, whether they realize it on a conscious level or not, it's speaking to them about life, about how life is chaotic, 
about how this world is chaotic. Our minds are chaotic. And we are inspired, like superheroes, to battle against chaos and bring order. But it's right there in the story of creation as well. The fact of bringing order from chaos is a, the fact that it is a battle is right there in all of the creation myths. Did you know that there's lots and lots of ancient creation myths out there from the ancient world? The whole idea is that there were personifications of chaos. The world is chaos. Think about nature, right? Think about how human beings, ancient human beings, must have been terrified by things like thunder and lightning. I'm not, I'm not even ashamed to admit, I get a little worked up when it's thundering and lightning. Now, and I know exactly what it is, right? Well, ancient man didn't know what thunder and lightning were. They didn't know what natural disasters were. They had to deal with predatory animals and all that sort of thing. It must have been really scary. The chaos of the world must have been really scary. So they personified those things that, uh, that, that represent chaos to them. And they personified it in characters, in monsters, in, in, in creatures, right? And then there's these stories about battling these creatures. Perhaps the most famous of these uh, creation uh, battle myths is, is it pronounced the Enuma Elish? I thought maybe you knew. <laughs> As a history major, I thought maybe you knew this. It's a Babylonian myth about the creation, right? And on the left there is the god Tiamat. She, uh, she is it's a goddess, and she is the god of the waters, the chaotic waters. Anybody who's been out on the ocean knows that it can get pretty chaotic out there, right? So, they personified the chaos of water as chaos of the whole universe. And then there is the heroic fi figure Marduk on the right there, and he is the one who battles against the, the chaos monster and defeats the chaos monster and brings order to the world. Now you think, oh, well, whatever, that's just an ancient story, right? But it's actually there in the Bible as well. And, and, and think about it. The order and chaos of our world makes sense. Like, like I said, let me just reiterate. We face a chaotic world, right? We face a world that's scary because we don't know what's going on. We can't control the world, right? The best we can do, as I talked about last week, is control ourselves, right? But we can't control the world. And that's scary. So we need a heroic figure to come and help bring order to the world. And that's what the Bible talks about when it comes to God. God is the, is the personification, par, you know, par excellence, the, the best personification of order. He is a God of order, as Paul said, a God of peace. In fact, we even find some of those creation myths being adapted into the Bible and putting God at the center of it instead of these other figures. So, have you ever heard of Leviathan? Bruce, it's not just a ride at Canada's Wonderland. It's actually a, a cosmic figure, like a, a dragon-like creature in the Bible, right? And there's also a figure named Rahab, who is also uh, a similar type creature. And the Bible speaks of the fact that God had to defeat those creatures in order to bring about the creation of the world, in order to bring about the created order. Look what it says in Psalms. It says about God, you crush the heads of Leviathan. And by God's understanding, he shattered Rahab. So they're adapting these pagan myths. It, it wouldn't be too, too different than saying that, that uh, just as Batman defeats and brings order to the chaos that the Joker brings, um, we can say, well, God is the one who defeats the Joker. It's literally like taking the, the one true God and, 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 and putting him into a fake pagan story, right? But that's what they did. Why? Because they saw the truth of it. Get this, right? I want us to all to understand. We don't have to worry about how objectively true these myths are. Don't worry about that. Because that's not what the biblical writers were worried about. They were worried about communicating the truth that God is the one who brings order to this world and to our lives. And we are made in God's image. And we have that same responsibility to bring order. That's so important, right? In fact, in the actual creation narrative of Genesis chapter 1 and 2, we saw this over the past two weeks, it says that the earth was formless and empty and darkness covered the whole earth 
uh, and the whole earth was covered with deep waters, right? And what did God do? Step by step, day by day, over six days, he brings order to the creation, right? He brings order to the chaos. So, God, no matter how you slice it, God is the one who battles the chaos, and that's how this world came about. And how we square that with science, and how we square that with um, how scientists understand the origin of the world, that's for a, a whole other discussion, and that's important. But the truth that we want to take from this is that we are made in God's image, and that we can battle against chaos by using our minds to bring order, just as God did. And, and I want to talk about that. This is, this is so important, and I'm so glad I discovered this this week. I, I didn't think of it until literally Friday, so I'm so glad I found this. We all know the Genesis 1.1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, right? What does it say in John 1.1? John, the, the Apostle John, what did he say? In the beginning was the Word, right? And verse 3 says that all things came to being through it, through that Word, right? What is he talking about? What is the Word? Get this. How did God bring order to the chaos of creation? Do you remember what he did? He spoke. He spoke his word and order came as a result. Right? So that's what the word is. The word is God's utterance, his intention, his, his taking his consciousness, which is the ultimate consciousness, and placing it onto the world through his speech. Right? Or you can think of it this way. The word not only is speech, it's wisdom. And it's not just any kind of wisdom. It's wisdom insofar as God had a plan. God had a plan for creation. God had a plan for us. And he knew that sin would overtake us. The chaos of sin would overtake us. So what did he do? He had a plan in mind. That one day that word, his wisdom, would become flesh. Would become a real human person. And that word became Jesus, the Messiah, our King. Right? And he makes God's plan come into effect so that we can have, we too can have order from chaos. So I say to you that we should think to ourselves that just as God had a plan and he spoke his plan into existence, we too should have a plan if we're going to have order. And order must come first in the mind. To have freedom from chaos in your life, you have to first have freedom from chaos in your mind. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to then make a plan and have true order in your life. So let's just see here that we have order in the mind first and that we can know that we can have a sound mind because it says, as we've been looking at, that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind, right? And as we looked at previously, we have the mind of Jesus, the King, of the Messiah, right? So what does this mean? This means that though if we were left to ourselves, we would be lost in the chaos. Chaos would overtake us. Sin would overtake us. It does. That's what we looked at a little bit last week, right? Like, to, again, to refer back to my eczema example. This would overtake my entire body if I let it, right? But I have to use the mind that God has given me to fight back against that and to bring order to my skin. What about my life? What about my mind? Well, the same is true. God enables me to be able to fight back against the chaos of my mind. And what, what am I talking about? Well, you, you remember a couple weeks ago that, uh, or last week, I shared with you that the week previous, I had a pretty bad week when it came to my mental health, right? I had a, a week where it was a challenge, right? Sarah remembers it was a challenge for me to get anything done and to be motivated. And, and, and again, it, it had to do with exhaustion. It had to do with the fact that I haven't taken a break in a while. In a while. But as I also alluded to, and as, as Jerry and I were talking about yesterday, you know, it's as soon as I chose to speak about having a sound mind. And we had such a wonderful day on Resurrection Sunday. You know, we had a, a full church, we had a great service, and suddenly the enemy comes and attacks my mind. Right? Makes total sense. That, that just as I'm feeling lifted up, the enemy would come and bring me down. Right? In the mind, especially. But, I had a good week last week. 
Or at least it was a better week, right? I had a good week last week. I had that research paper to write for my ABC class, and it took me all week, and it made everything crammed into these last two days to get ready for today, but it happened. It worked. Look, here, here we are. The service is going okay, I hope. <laughs> but you know what I also thought about last week? Well, first of all, the fact that that verse where it says that we are to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth, but to our point, to, to my point, we are to subdue the earth. You, see, you know what that means? God understood all too well that the chaos was not eradicated. When God brought order to the world in the creation, he didn't eradicate chaos, he just subdued it. He, he put it at bay, if you will. So when he created us, he said, okay, I want you to continue that work. Subdue the earth. Subdue the chaos. And I talked last week about the reality of the chaos of the mind, right? And how we need to take control. And you remember what I talked about on, on a scientific level? The reality of dopamine? You remember that? Again, I'm not an expert, so I, I, I feel like I'm, I'm at a loss to explain it very well. But the idea is, is that it's, it's a neurotransmitter. It's a chemical in our, in our brain that actually uh, rewards us with pleasure to, in order to repeat activity, to repeat actions, a behavior. And so often, when people are addicted to something, it's because they like that pleasure that comes from the dopamine chemical hit. Right? So I gave some examples last week of when you go out shopping and you're hunting for something and then you finally find it, you get that good feeling, right? Because that's dopamine in your brain and it's telling you, oh, you, got your, you accomplished your goal. Maybe you should repeat that, right? We get that same feeling after eating a good meal, after sexual activity, after a whole bunch of different kinds of pleasurable things. Our body and our brain says, do it again, do it again. It's good. Don't you like doing it? Right? Basically this, if you ever go, ah, right? Have you ever gone, ah, after a good meal? Ah, that was good. Or once you find that item that you're looking for, that you're shopping for, you say, ah, there it is, right? It's a good feeling. Well, that's dopamine in your brain. Now, here's the thing. If you can use that to your advantage rather than your disadvantage, wouldn't that be good? What if you, every time you exercised, you got a dopamine hit? Isn't that the case? I, I think that's scientifically the case. People get a good feeling after they exercise because they've accomplished a goal, right? So guess what? We can actually use this to our advantage if we just start making good choices and getting to better behaviors and, 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 and getting into better habits, right? So we'll come back to this in a, in a moment, and I'll give you some examples of what that would look like. But I felt, I felt this when I was writing my sermon this week, I felt this very strongly. This was, I think, the Lord speaking to me to remind you of this. You are worth it. You are worth it. Do not think that whatever you've done in your life, that God is angry with you. God loves you, right? God wants you to have a good life. God wants you to have freedom from the chaos of your mind. To have a peaceful life in your, in your heart and mind. And then in your relationships and, and everything else. So, don't give up. That's my, my encouragement to you today. You're worth it, and don't give up. Because persistence is the key to this. It's not easy, you know? I'm preaching to myself here. You do realize that. And, and, and because of how my experience was a couple weeks ago, I had to remind myself, I'm not going to become perfect with all this stuff in one day, in one week. I have to persist and not give up. And I am worth it because God loves me. And Jesus died for me. And you are worth it for those same reasons. Right? So don't give up. God is with you. And he loves us. And we can, we can dig past the surface if we keep going. And we can find the reward. Find the fulfillment. Alright, so to reiterate. Last week I said, there's no glamorous answer. There's no magic pill. There's no button I can press or switch I can flip. Right? We each have to make a choice to take control of our lives. Otherwise, it's not going to happen. God respects our freedom of the will way too much for him, for him to do it for us. He, he wants us to choose. But to remember this verse, this was actually our memory verse from last week, that Paul said that we should take every thought prisoner and make it obey the Messiah. Make it obey the King. Every negative thought that comes into your mind, 
take it and say, hey, that's not right. That's not what Jesus would say. Uh, thought, I'm going to make you obey Jesus, right? So you're not worth it. You are, you've done too many things and God is angry with you. Take those thoughts and get rid of them and make them obey Jesus instead and say God loves you and God's with you, right? Now get this, taking control is not how the world takes control. How the world takes control is through power, through might. Might makes right, right? That's not how Jesus does it. I already alluded to this earlier in the service. It's through humility and through submission to, to God and to the greater ideal, to the greater purpose. So that's why I told you last week that the ultimate goal or purpose in your life, whatever that may be, has to be more motivating than whatever the momentary pleasure is. Otherwise, why wouldn't you just keep doing the momentary pleasure? If you don't have any purpose, and to, again, to go back to the, to the health, the, the, the nutrition and, and, and health example, because it's such an easy, relatable example, that if I don't have in mind that not eating the cookie, not eating the junk food, is going to allow me to have the kind of health and body that I want. If I don't have that in mind, why wouldn't I eat the delicious junk food that's right in front of me, right? So you have to have a greater purpose, a greater motivation. Why would we you know, work so hard here at the church like we are? Because we know there's a greater purpose, right? We know that there's a purpose to bring the gospel and the truth to our community and to see lives transformed. We're not doing this just for fun, <laughs> right? We're doing this because we know that there's a greater purpose, right? And so, in fact, and here's our memory verse for this week, that God's grace has appeared, Jesus has appeared, brought salvation, right? Gave us the opportunity to have a sound mind and to have his mind. In, our, in ours. And what does that cause us to do? It teaches us and, and inspires us to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives. Not later, now. In this present evil age, with all the evil around us, God's grace and his love motivates us to be self-controlled, to live in such a way where we are living with morals, and we, we care about what God has said about what's right and wrong, and we control ourselves as a result. So that's, that's, that's our, the direction that we can go in if we're going to have order in our lives. We take control. But you know what? If we're going to have order from chaos in our lives, <clears throat> I, I need some specific instructions. Who appreciates specific instructions on how to get stuff done? Yeah? Right. Okay. I'm going to give you two areas. And, and I wish we had lots and lots of time. But I do encourage you, come the next three weeks because I'll get go further and deeper into some more specific things that we can do. Like next week is all about how we can start our day right. Two weeks from now is going to be how we should be taking a day off and why that matters. And the last week of this series is going to be all about how we should get rid of toxic things in our lives that, that, that just bring us down. And, and how this all relates together. But here's order from chaos. Some practical instructions. Firstly, bring order. And how do we bring order to our lives? How do we make that choice? Now, I, okay, let me, let me ask, ask it this, uh, this way and see if this makes sense. How often do you buy stuff or do stuff that you don't really need? Right? Does that ever happen to anybody? Yeah. Have you ever thought, well, well maybe if I get rid of that stuff or stop doing those things or, or just you know, show some self-control and, and be a little more focused on what is important and what is essential and valuable, don't you think that there might be a little less chaos in our lives? Right? Focus. Focus. And uh, once again, I'm preaching to my... You saw that room. <laughs> In fact, I am living what I'm preaching right now with the, when it comes to that room. The reason why it's such a mess is because I'm going through the whole room finding out what I can sell. What can I, why do I have so many things? Clearly, I bought a lot of stuff that I didn't really need, right? So I'm selling a lot of it, right? So, and I want to keep the things that have meaning to me. But that's just in the area of like literally just organizing your, 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 your house. And the same is true for my office, if you've seen it recently, right? 
you know, focus, <laughs> focus, and, and and keep what is essential, and then then you will have less chaos, literally and figuratively. But the same is true of our relationships. Do we really need people in our lives that are just bringing us down? Do we really need things that we do? Learn how to say no, right? I'm, sorry, I'm preaching to myself. Learn how to say no. Don't do everything all at once. Focus on what is most important. Right? Along those lines, use the tools that are available to you. I have an iPhone, and I use the Reminders app. Because I, like so many of us, forget stuff all the time. Somebody tells, you know, for, for many years, for the first two or three years of being your pastor, people would come up to me after the service and say, Hey, Daniel, can you do this, this, and this? I'd be like, I'll be right on it. And then I completely forget, Right? Now I don't have an excuse because I have a tool that reminds me uh, what I need to be doing in my life, right? So very, very practical. Use the tools that are available to us in order to bring focus and order to our lives. Look, this isn't, this isn't anything, again, glamorous or anything that is like, oh my goodness, I've never heard of this before. These are, these are simple things that we can do to bring more order to the chaos of our minds and of our lives, right? And secondly, for, t- for, for these practical tips, be productive. I, who was I? I was just literally talking to somebody, I think today, about how, I think it was Norm, about how it, it's important that you be productive and you don't, uh, it's what I said last week, don't be isolated, right? Don't be bored. That's the worst thing you could do. Being bored and isolated will bring nothing but chaos to your mind, Right? So instead, be productive. Take on some kind of responsibility. If you're Jordan Peterson, he would say, clean up your room before you go out criticizing the world. Right? (laughs) Make your bed every day. Do the dishes. Do whatever it is. Take on some kind of responsibility. Feel like you've done something with your day. Because I guarantee you'll feel better as a result. You'll feel more like what God has created you for, which is with purpose to bring order. But more than that, Choose goals that have meaning to you, right? Choose goals that have meaning so that you will be motivated to do and accomplish those goals, right? And if you do that, who here appreciates once they've said, I'm going to accomplish something, and then you accomplish it, you get that dopamine hit, (laughs) that you feel good, right? That's what I was referring to earlier. Let's use that that mental process to our advantage by being productive and bringing order to our lives. Does that make sense? Those are my tips to you today. That what I want to leave you with. Those are your next steps, right? To bring order, consciously bring order to your life by focusing, by, by using the tools at your disposal, and by being productive, by taking on responsibility, especially meaningful responsibility. But let's have Sarah come. We're going to sing this song. Because guess what? I made this point last week and I want to reiterate it now. There is no way we can do this on our own. Right? We don't need to take very long to say, if I was doing this on my own, I would fail. Right? I would fail. I know I would fail. I have failed many, many times when it comes to trying to bring order to my life and to my mind. But where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is what? There is freedom freedom from the chaos of our minds. So we have to ask God, God, empower me, help me to do this. And that's what we're going to sing. This old favorite song of ours from from back when we were kids, right? Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Let's sing this. (laughs) 